Thank you, Matthew. And thank you. Uh, you are here. It's a great honor for me to share my uh, little research. So, uh, I like the title because it a kind of capturing the sequence of life of one of the participants in my dissertation. So this study will be, uh, this presentation will be one of my participants. So uh, the findings of one of uh, my participants' narratives. So getting married, quitting the job, and becoming an English teacher. That's the sequence of life. One particular participant yeah, uh, that show me and uh, this is related to teacher professional identity. Yeah, I can see it in contestations because of the findings later on uh, I would like to discuss. <laughs> so, with kids. kids. So, uh, just to describe a little bit about uh, the particular uh, participants, she said this. Yeah, this is in uh, actually in English translation. She said it in English. I was raised in a teacher family. My parents, my father was an English teacher, and my mother's biology teacher. From my ancestor, there were teachers or ulamas. So, this is just snapshots of what she said at the time. So just to give you a little bit uh, insights about the partic uh, participants. So, yeah, Indonesia. This is Indonesia, uh, where I'm from. So uh, I live here in uh, Java, and uh, the participants actually live uh, are, uh, from Sumatra. Right now, she is in the US studying for her PhD degree in one of the universities in the Midwest. So, uh, for my dissertation, just to tell you a little bit about my dissertation, uh, I interview uh, six Indonesian teachers, and also I have a group discussions, and then contacting them uh, uh, via email. So, for this particular participants, I use mostly her interview as my main data. So uh, she is from here, from Sumatra, and now she is here in the US. And I interviewed them in 2013, April. Uh, and let's go on. So uh, this is the background. So I'm interested in this uh, because when I read Johnson, Johnston actually, one of the professor at IU in 1997, it has been two decades, more than two decades, asking about, do EFL teachers have careers? So he studied uh, Polish English teachers and he concerns that EFL teachers in Poland has a kind of uh, need uh, in questions of the professions. Uh, do we really have professions? And uh, based on his studies, just that we need, as a, in FL teachers in Poland, they need to up, uh, lift their image as uh, EFL teachers. So actually, based on many studies, EFL teachers in many different countries uh, has been marginalized, either because of the unknown native speakers of English or native speakers of English living in a different context. So, uh, like uh, Daf and Uchida talks about native speakers teaching in Japan, and uh, since uh, they are women, they are marginalized. Since they are native speakers, they only ask to teach speaking, for example. Uh, they are not allowed to teach uh, the content courses, which is considered higher in a certain uh, places. So uh, Johnston challenged us that we need to get real data, research data about Teaching profession, English, uh, English teacher, uh, English teacher 
profess, uh, professions? Do we have uh, professions? That's a big question. And in a way, my research is answering, responding his challenge to uh, provide data, especially from Indonesia, because Indonesia uh, is not really uh, a place of research. Uh, the discourse of English language teaching outside the US or in Asia, usually is in China or Korea, not in Indonesia. So that's why this is part of uh, my response to Johnston's providing data about English teacher professions. So my main question is, how were professional identities of an Indonesian Yeva teacher shaped and received in her life history? So just for your information, this is uh, the context in Indonesia. So we used to be uh, a place where Dutch uh, colonized the uh, big area of Indonesia. So we, most of the people don't speak English. So English is taught since fourth grade of elementary school. But currently it's changed. Now it started, it start at uh, middle school because of uh, the policy uh, changes just last year. New curriculum introduced and then uh, people said that English uh, can threaten our national language and so on. And then now English is taught officially middle school. And then the curriculum, the national curriculum is based on uh, certain standards and we call it competency-based curriculums uh, based on uh, communicative language teaching. And English teachers should have formal education track to become a teacher. So uh, you have to go to a school of education, uh, have the education there, and then get, um, uh, if you want to teach at university level, at least you have advanced education in the same track. So usually college degree for education is uh, four years. And then, yeah, uh, it will be related to uh, the participant later that although not explicitly required to become a tenure track professor at school of education, a candidate should have a college degree in education, advanced degree in the same field. So, in doing my study, I have two frameworks. The first one, actually, uh, it is under the umbrella of uh, sociocultural perspective, but I would, uh, I employ critical event in narratives and also uh, identity in narratives. So two uh, theoretical framework I employ here. So I use this uh, Webster and Mer uh, Mertofa suggests that critical event as told in the story reveals a change of understanding of what view of storyteller. So from the interview, I uh, construct the narrative of the storytellers and then identify the critical events. From the critical events, uh, then I also identify the, uh, using the second framework, identity in discourse. So current research identity informs us that identity is always changing, it is dynamic. So uh, when we see identity uh, in the narrative, in the story, we can identify that, I, uh, that identity claimed by the <coughs> narrator is always in dialogue with others, either uh, outside world, in dialogue with self, or yeah, uh, when it uh, uh, have dialogues with uh, the outside world, the uh, others, then uh, it can be the authority, it can be uh, other people, the schools, and so on. So uh, this is what uh, I did. So I identified the identity claim uh, in narrative, which is uh, yeah, the subject positions, 
that uh, other explicit or implicit subject positions in the narratives. So this is what I did uh, from the data. So the participants, so uh, go deeper on the participants. My participant, uh, I call it Ratna, this is a pseudonym, pseudonym, an English teacher with a bachelor degree in agriculture and a master degree in English education. She studied three years in the U.S. Uh, elementary school, so her English was uh, very good. Uh, she was born in Indonesia and she came here when she was a child because her, parent, her parents uh, was studying here at that time, so her English is very good. And then she went back to Indonesia, uh, had a uh, high school in Indonesia, and then she decided not to become teachers like her family, but she wanted to be uh, different, so she went to agriculture department uh, for her college degree. She finished uh, her education in college degree in agriculture and then she worked in a different job before finally she worked in a bank so as a credit analyst for 11 years yeah. so she worked in a bank with a prospect of a good career but then she got married she married her colleagues in the bank so because there is regulations there that uh, a couple, uh, husband and wife cannot work in the same company, in the, the same bank, then she decided to quit the job. So that's why quitting the job. And uh, yeah, her husband stayed in the bank. So that's why uh, she is there. She quitted the job. And she thought, because uh, she thought that her English uh, was very good, she thought that she will jump in the teaching positions. But as I told you before, in Indonesia, you need a formal track uh, for a teaching position. So she decided then to study in the uh, for her master degree in uh, language education. So, turning uh, to a different profession is a big problem because she did not have formal background in education. So she took a master degree in TESO and her undergraduate degree in agriculture was always in questions when uh, later she applied for a job for a teaching position. You are under, uh, your undergraduate is agriculture. Why you want to become an English teacher? Although she already had master degree in TESO, that's uh, her her struggle with her professional identity. So uh, if we talked a little bit about uh, the theory, uh, the studies, the previous studies about identity. We have learned uh, that a teacher professional identity, in many cases, is always in dialogue with something, with others. So like uh, a recent one, Chana Garaja, in his autoethnography, she talked about his professional identity as an educator, as a TESO professional, in terms of how he can get into the community of the professionals. So uh, he navigated his way to become a member of the professional community. Uh, other works uh, related to identity that might be close to my study, a uh, Shui in 2007 described the complexity of identity of English teachers, Chinese English teachers. The contact is in China, and at that time, uh, communicative language teaching is uh, in its high day, and he was forced to embrace this approach, and he did. 
and his professional identity is marked with his dialogue with this approach because she had to teach uh, this approach, she has to master this approach and she did it very well. But in many ways this approach is in conflict with his own belief, with his own experience. And other study that uh, can inform us more about teacher identity as of 2006, it is a wider study talking about professional, uh, teacher professional identity in general. And uh, the main thrust of uh, ASOP's research is about integrating the personal and the professionals. So when we are in a teaching position, becoming teacher, there are always a kind of conflict, identity conflict between our professions and our professional identity. <coughs> and ASOP suggests that in order for us to become, uh, was it, uh, to develop our profession better, we have to resolve the conflicts. There should be an integration of identity. Actually, uh, other, there are other studies like uh, Dr. Pawan talked about uh, EFL teachers in the context of US, which is marginalized because it's become a kind of helper of content teacher. And then uh, some other study uh, from Turkey uh, have a similar things, but in this way, the identity is shaped in terms of the dialogue with uh, religious perspective. Uh, I forgot the, the authors of the study, but uh, teachers and uh, teacher professional development is marked by the dialogue, uh, the dialogue with uh, religion, with religious identity. Okay, so just uh, the data I use um, for this particular research, uh, for this particular participant, I use an uh, interview. But I also uh, use the uh, field notes and correspondence and uh, personal conversations with the participants. So this is the way uh, I analyze the data, two steps of analysis. The first, I uh, identify the identity claims in the uh, interview and then I also construct the critical events and see uh, and put the identity claims around the two critical events getting married and uh, getting married and uh, fail to get uh, what is the job she wants so this is the critical event so failing to secure a teaching position in a prestigious university because her backgrounds of uh, education is not in line for that. Yeah, so uh, the identity claim around uh, the two critical events. This is some uh, quotes from the participants. And just for conclusions. So EFL teacher identity formations always in dialogue with self and others. In dialogue with others, such as the outside authority, identity can be claimed and reclaimed. And in the case of my participants, her, uh, her professional identity formation was marked by her struggle to claim her teaching authority as it always in class with the society standards that require formal education to get professional acceptance. And then formal teacher education in Indonesia is important. It is the gatekeeper of getting into the pro uh, professions. And uh, another significant thing. So I can see that struggle and tensions is part of uh, professional identity development. So in this case, uh, in uh, the case of the participants, the tensions between uh, the professional identity that's uh, between a professional identity and the authority outside her that want her to be uh, on a certain track.
Thank you very much. And if you could please have a seat. We have a little bit of time now for questions and answers. So if you do have a question, please raise your hand and get your name.